The Venezuelan elections are approaching. It will, the data will be at the end of July. But what are the real factors that could overthrow Maduro from power? In this video, we will analyze what are the three scenarios that really could make a change in Venezuela. But before going on with the presentation, please remember that there is my book on the European Union on sales. This is my new book, my second book, Euro Dementia. It is written in several languages, so it's for it is possible to at the moment to purchase it in English, Spanish, and Italian. In the description of this video, you will find the link in order to get my book, and you have also the link in order to get my first book on inflation. So I really invite you to get it because you will have, thanks to my book, the opportunity to understand everything you need to know about Europe. So what is the situation in Venezuela? In order to understand what is the situation in Venezuela, you have to think that Venezuela, it is not normal, typical country. In Venezuela, there are international gangs that operate in the traffic on, of narcotics around the world. Uh, one of these gangs is called the Cartel of Soles, and the other one is El Tren de Aragua. At the same time, Nicolás Maduro, the Venezuela president, is searched by the justice system of the United States, and there is a reward of $15 million on his head. So, <clears throat> as well as Mr. Maduro, many of the important people around him have a similar reward. So, it is not easy for them to let power, because at the moment that they will let power, they could be jailed and they could end their life, probably, in the United States for criminal activities. Having said that, uh, you have to, to think that there could be some scenario that could really bring a change in Venezuela. What are these scenarios? The first one is a coup d'etat within the Nicolás Maduro regime. Somebody close to Maduro that wants to change the boss, that wants to become the, the, the boss, that could overthrow Maduro. And there is the rumor that Diosdado Cabello, the number two of the regime, is not completely in line with Maduro and could, at some point, take an action against the president. I'm referring to Diosdado Cabello, probably the number two of the Venezuelan regime. Another opportunity to, to have a real change in Venezuela could come from an agreement between Maduro and the other party, the, the other the, the, the people against him, an immunity agreement. So, thanks to the immunity agreement, Maduro might be willing to pass the power to Maria Corino Machado uh, party. But in this case, I consider it uh, um, a less likely scenario because for how is Maduro, I think is the less likely scenario possible. And then you have the third one, that is a possible scenario, maybe not during a Biden administration, but it might happen. And this scenario happened in Panama. In Panama there was Noriega, a dictator, and finally, as well as in Venezuela, the Panamanian situation during, during Noriega regime, it was similar because Noriega was dealing with illicit businesses the same situation that is happening in Venezuela. So, the United States Army intervened directly in Panama, took Nor took, captured Noriega and brought Nor Noriega to the United States that spent many decades in, the United in a federal jail in the United States. So, it might happen something similar, but there are differences because it is easier to overtake Panama then overtake Venezuela. Venezuela is a really big country. The Venezuela army is much bigger than the one that counted, that Noriega counted. So, a different situation. But at some point, there could be a US president that decides to go there and take Maduro. It, 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 it is a possibility that shouldn't be excluded. And these are, in my opinion, the only three possible scenarios where it, Venezuelan people could see a change in their regime. Last but not least of my worries about Venezuela are referred 
to a sad story of Latin America. I'm referring to Dominican Republic during the dictatorship regime of Rafael Leonida Trujillo. Why I'm saying that? Well, I went to the Dominican Republic the first time in the year 2000 after reading the book about Trujillo by Mario Vargallosa, the famous Peruvian writer. And after reading this book, I was impressed of how Trujillo regime, after more than 40 years of having ended, scared the Dominican, the people of the Dominican Republic. When I was in my visit in the Dominican Republic, I was impressed by how the people were scared with the memories of that regime. Most of the people was even born at that time, but they had their grandparents, their family, telling them the stories about this brutal dictator. And why I'm saying that? Well, because I see the, 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 the idea, the speech of Nicolás Maduro and this cupola that are extremely aggressive. And even the actions that are taken against their opposers. They use the, the, the usual excuse that they are complotting against them. They have the, the usual excuses that are from the Red Book written by Fidel Castro. But anyway, I am worried that the Venezuelan regime could escalate in brutality. I hope it will be only a worry, but I don't see a pacific end of the regime, unfortunately, in Venezuela. And I'm worried that the regime became in the future more and more aggressive and more violent against its citizens than what it is currently. And actually, at, at the moment, it is extremely repressive. There are many, many prisoners in the Venezuela jails that suffer on the end of the, this terrible regime. But I am worried that, that in the future, the situation could escalate even worse. But I hope it will be only a worry and things uh, probably won't get that bad. Anyway, remember to give me your like, to subscribe to the channel, and please share this video with your friends.